We are Ham Radio. Welcome back, everybody. It's Freddie Mac, your Ham Radio Crusader, and I'm here kind of crippled a little bit. Uh, for some reason, my desktop stopped working this morning. That's my production computer, so we punted over to the laptop. But I wanted to show you real quick how to program the TID radio TDH3. It was a little different than I'm used to, but not too much. If you look right here on the microphone K connector side, you have a USB-C port. At first, I thought, hey, that's the charging port. That's kind of cool. And then I looked on the bottom. I'm like, hey, there's a charging port right, right there. So I'm like, I look at the manual, they refer to that as a data port. So what I did was I took a USB-C data cable, it's an A on the computer's end, and I need to plug that in. But nonetheless, make sure it's a data cable, not just a charging cable. The USB-C cable is plugged in to the machine. So let's switch over to the software. This is the TID Radio H3 ham version software. I'm pretty sure this is the right one for my application. And if you can't sell, I'm just gonna plug that in right there. And you hear that? It's like, hey, there's something there that I recognize. The computer's like, I know what to do with that. Let's hope it does. We're gonna hit COM port. And it shows COM1 and COM11. So I know COM1's not it. So I'm gonna hit COM11, hit OK. And I'm gonna read the radio and hit read. And look at that business. We are reading the radio. No special programming cables needed. Yes, the Bluetooth feature on the radio works. I don't like it. My personal preference, it's a little glitchy. It doesn't do it the way I like to do it always and it's a lot of steps and a lot of being careful with the screen where I just rather use the software or I could program it on the face it's not that big a deal it's just a lot of typing to get the letters in for the channel labels so we hit close and here are our frequencies and you didn't notice and you probably didn't because I probably didn't show you the boot screen goes to a label that I created and I misspelled or actually got the case on one of them wrong so let's go to let's say it's option features right here where it says crusader i put a, the r in lower case so let's change that but on the optional features page you get squelch level light control which is the backlight you can change it to continuous five seconds ten seconds fifteen or thirty Voice prompt for that menu gal is there. I've turned it off. An auto lock feature if you would like it. Timeout timer for talking too long. I had to set it to the max because I'm long winded. MDFA and B is memory display function, I think. And anyway, it's whatever you want the channel to display. You want the channel display the channel name or the frequency. I like it on name. Sync, I am not exactly sure what that is unless it's the Bluetooth synchronization. Let's just turn it off real quick and we'll see if it comes on when we program the radio. Now, breath lead, yeah, took a minute for me to figure that out, but I had some very faithful subscribers who gave me some comments on some of my videos asking that question. They answered me right away. And what it is, is if you have the backlight set to go off, the, the, uh, push to talk LEDs, or I'm sorry, the LEDs at the top up here will blink in unison every five seconds, 10 seconds, whatever you set that timing at. And it basically lets you know, it's like, hey, even though my display isn't on, I'm still turned on. And the light will blink to let you know, hey, I'm still powered on because I've left a few turned on all night long thinking they were off and ran the batteries down. But hey, it is what it is. Up here is the language, which you can set to English or Chinese. Battery save ratio. Double RX, which means you want to do dual receive on or off. Mine is set to on. Uh, the channel stepping for the AVFO and the BVFO, I always have it mine usually at 2.5. It's whatever you want. Uh, scan mode, and that's for cause detect or timeout. Just whatever you want to, the scan mode to be. You know, if you're scanning along and it picks up a signal, it'll stop on it. On some settings, it'll just stay there for a few seconds and then continue on. Other settings, it'll just stay there until it's done talking and then continue on. Priority transmit is set for edit or busy. I'm not sure what their terminology means there, but I'll leave mine at edit. Microphone gain is at five. I'm glad there's an adjustment there, but it seems five, five seems to be fine. Roger beep on or off, mine is off. Uh, tone one is a bloop. Tone two is like an MDC 1200 for Motorola. Sounds like Motorola, it's like a data burst, you know. 
uh, the beep, which is the menu beep, copy channel. Uh, I always thought that was an over-the-air programming from one radio to the other. It is not. I don't know exactly what the purpose of that is. Display LCD, display LCD for transmit and receive. Those are enabled, and, or you can set it to only channel mode if you want to just say put it on a channel mode and just tell whoever's using the radio just use channel whatever you know it's it's a it's an option it's a feature power on message I have mine set for message but you can set it to full which I think it's just straight into the radio there's no menu no icon no banner display you can go to message or the icon and the icon just says tid radio in their little tagline but I put a custom message in here short key for PF1 for the record this is PF1. You give a short press and a long press. Short press gives you the lamp, long press gives you the monitor, or you can change it to whatever you want. And then right there is your Vox settings. Now you can also go to A and B channel. These are the A and B VFOs. Set them to a default of your desired wish. FM is some presets for some FM radio channels. I like to listen to 99.1 and 95.1 hit ok DTMF is to put in some preset DTMF settings if you'd like and let's put in a new frequency here 467.700 input error yes this is the GM this is the ham version so it won't let me put GMRS transmit frequencies in so I'm gonna hit right actually we're gonna close that I'm not going to write that to this because I have rewritten, uh, I have updated the firmware in this radio and I have it unlocked for ham and GMRS. So if I write it with this, it's going to change my code plug. But you get the gist of it. That's how you read it and write it. It's really simple to do. Now, with that software, when you get it, the TDH3, which you can download all these softwares from hamradiolife.org. Uh, this is the unlocked version, and there's the programming software. And it should be on my desktop right here. It just says H3. So when you run that, I'm going to check the COM port, put it back on 11. In my case, it's COM 11. It may be different on yours, of course. Read the radio. And there are the frequencies we have in it. So, as you can see right here, I have a GMRS frequency repeater programmed in and up here are my ham channels so we could put in one more 462.500 or actually I think it's 550 and I better type it in right and 467.550 I want to say that PL is non well it's standard but it's non-standard to me 192.8 and we'll call it WRWZ 428 and now I've got that frequency in there and that's the label there the channel label that will show up and let's go back to our optional features change that R like I wanted to and I believe the rest of these are where I wanted them. Go to edit, A, B channel. I don't think we want to change anything there. And DTMF. Oh yeah, 99.1 and 95.1. Let's just try that out. Seems like there's one more thing I wanted to try. Oh yeah, the sync. Let's turn that off because our Bluetooth is, well, it's not currently on. So I'm not sure. Let's just leave that turned on. It may have something to do with it anyway. Anyway, let's go ahead and write this code plug. It doesn't take very long. 
and write is finished and the radio resets. So let's go to, all right. Now, I always like to do this after every program. If you look, you'll see my ham radio crusader verbiage is right there on the screen when it reboots and it's spelled correctly. The case of the letters are correct now. And it seems like, let's go through here and I put in that 462.550 and it transmits on it. No problem. And this is my all-star node here at the house. Let me put that on low power first. Dense fog advisory. We're under a dense fog advisory currently. Uh, just so you know, uh, I didn't read the, the handbook. I didn't read the manual before I got started, but you have a you have an A VFO and a B VFO. Boom, boom, boom. Well, guess what? You also have an A PTT and a B PTT. So if you want to transmit on the bottom one, you got to hit the second button. If you want to transmit on the top one, you got to hit the top button. Because if you look, if you look, you see that little triangle right there? You know, that's the one that's active right now. And it's getting some QRM because my shack is full of it. But if I transmit on the top, that activity light goes to the top. But this this diamond over here... This is the KD5 FMU All-Star Note 58176 in Henrietta, Oklahoma. This one indicates the VFO that you have selected. So when you jump into the menu on the face of the radio, that's the settings that you're changing it for. So if you want to get it down to the bottom, just hit the AB right there. Boop, 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 boop. Let's say you're selected on the top VFO and you're looking at 444.100, but you transmit on the bottom side. The frequency up here does not change because this is the one that is selected. So it's something you just got to be aware of. Nonetheless, and if you've seen my video somewhere on how to upgrade the firmware on your TDH-8, it's the exact same process for the TDH-3. And that firmware is in this package that you will download. Lots of instructions. It's very simple. You want to turn the radio off connect the cable, load the software, load the firmware upgrade file, hit start, push down on your PTT button and turn on your radio. We'll put it into firmware update mode, but the cable's gotta be plugged in. That'll put it into firmware update mode and then you can hit start on the program and it will update the firmware. And I'll have the latest version of firmware that are on there. And a few YouTuber friends of mine that I know have done a spectral analysis on this radio after the firmware upgrade and it's within limits. So there's that. <laughs> Not a bad little deal for a tiny little Baofeng sized radio. So go to hamradiolife.org to download the software and I hope you guys find this video fun, informational, any help in any way. Channel memberships will be open soon if not already, so please become a member of the channel and help me move this channel forward. I'm attending Dayton Hamvention this year and I'm also going to be at Huntsville, Alabama for the Huntsville Ham Fest in August, so I hope to see you all there. This is Freddie Mac, your Ham Radio Crusader saying 73's, wishing all the good signals to be yours and ham on y'all. <laughs>